Today, we going to Bronx River. We did this story before, but we cleaned it up a bit. Here's how the story goes. On February 24, 2020, Rico, Perp, and Gutta were convicted following a jury trial before your honor. As established at trial, each one of the defendants held a leadership role in Roland 30s, a subset of the nationwide Crip Street Gang, and each one of the defendants was personally responsible for heinous acts of violence, as well as acts they enabled through their participation in the Roland 30s enterprise. The charges in this case arose out of a years-long investigation conducted by the New York City Police Department and the Department of Homeland Security. In the course of the investigation, NYPD and HSI discovered that each of the defendants occupied a leadership role in the Roland 30s, also referred to as the Rich Roland 30s and Dirt Gang. Its members are known for committing acts of violence, particularly against other street gangs, as well as trafficking drugs and firearms. Indeed, for a person to join the ranks of the Roland 30s, that person usually must either commit a violent act that furthers the gang's goals in some way, putting in work, or be subjected to violence themselves, by being jumped in, that is, withstanding a beating for a specified amount of time. The Roland 30s have an organizational hierarchy, with more senior or powerful members being referred to as OGs, short for Original Gangsters and Big Homies, or Bigs. That hierarchy is maintained, in part, by requiring members to pay dues, and by enforcing gang rules and norms through violence and threats of violence. As stated, each of the defendants served as a senior member of the Roland 30s. Rico oversaw a number different lines of the Roland 30s, each rooted in a different neighborhood in New York City and beyond. Rico used aliases, such as Rico and Magneto, depending on which Roland 30s said he was interacting with. In his view, this would make it harder to trace things back to him. Perp was positioned in the gang directly under Rico, and oversaw a particularly violent lineup of the Roland 30s centered on Stratford Avenue in the Bronx. As the head of that line, Perp was also referred to as a big homie, whereas Gutta who was directly under Perp was a Stratford Avenue G or gangster. Though not quite as high-ranking, Gutta was Perp's hand-picked successor, considered by Perp to be next in line. Prior to their arrest in this case, Perp stated to another gang member that he had chosen Gutta to take over Stratford Avenue, as Perp stepped up to take over some of Rico's supervisory responsibilities. It was in these roles as leaders, organizers, and instigators that from at least 2009 to 2017, the defendants, as members of the Roland 30s, engaged in a series of violent incidents, motivated in part to protect their territory, to settle internal power disputes, to attack members of other street gangs, and to increase Roland 30s members' power, reputation, and influence. As a result of their actions, members of opposing street gangs, other Crips members, and innocent people were shot, maimed, and murdered. Rico described himself as four levels from the top of the Crips national leadership. The territory over which Rico presided was expansive. Neighborhood sets under his control included those in Brooklyn, the Bronx, upstate New York, and Florida. In his role as a big homie, Rico oversaw the management of literally hundreds of Crips members, he was empowered to order disciplinary action against gang members, including gang beatings, and to collect dues. When the leader of the Hughes Avenue line of the Roland 30s was killed, Rico took over the day-to-day -day management of the set, including by interjecting himself into local turf battles and overseeing drug dealing. Rico grew up rough. When he was young, the man whom his moms had a relationship with would take him to an abandoned apartment in the building, put a bulletproof vest on him, and shoot around him and over his head at close range with a revolver. If he would cry, he would be hit with a gun. He had relatively small stature and would take up boxing in his later years to defend himself. At 15, he joined the Crips and made his way up the ladder. Rico played an active role in the gang at least until April 2016, when he conducted a drive-by shooting of Pressure. As the evidence showed at trial, Pressure was the leader of the certified Harlem Crips CHC, a Queens-based subset of the Roland 30s that had significant conflict with Rico's Harlem Mafia Crips. According to Rico, on the night of that drive-by shooting, another CHC member provided Rico with information about Pressure's location. Rico obtained a gun from Perp, found Pressure, and shot him from the back. Although Pressure survived, he was shot multiple times. Surveillance video introduced at trial showed that he was unable to get up and laid on the ground bleeding until an ambulance arrived. Rico's disputes with gang members also led to other acts of violence, including the drive-by attempted murder of Spider, a member of a rival gang, during which two innocent bystanders a man and a pregnant woman were shot and injured. 
That drive-by shooting, perpetrated by Perp, resulted from a dispute between Rico and Castillo, a rival gang member. Rico repeatedly fanned the flames of this dispute on social media, in conversations with his subordinate members of the role in 30s, and with his own physical actions, such as posing for photographs in Castillo's neighborhood in an effort to taunt his rivals. Allegedly, Rico and Spider were dissing each other in a Facebook post because Rico was dating Spider's ex-girlfriend. Mr. Torres's method of resolving this feud was to have a weaponless one-on-one -on -one fight with Spider. Most seriously, the evidence at trial proved that Rico was directly involved in the murder of Nestor Suazo, aka Smack, a 25-year-old CHC member. Before we get into that, let's talk about another member. From at least 2014 through 2017, J-Rock was a member of the role in 30s. J-Rock had achieved G or gangster status within the gang, which meant he had achieved leadership status. He was a prolific street-level drug dealer who distributed both crack cocaine and powder cocaine throughout 2014 to 2017, mostly in the area around Hughes Avenue in the Bronx. It was understood that the area of Hughes Avenue around East Tremont Avenue and Belmont Avenue was a Crips block, meaning drugs and guns can only be sold in that area by members of the Roland 30s or with a blessing on the Roland 30s. When violence broke out with various adversaries, J-Rock was a soldier who committed acts of violence and furtherance of the gang. The day Nestor Suazo was murdered, various subsets of the role in 30s, including HMC and CHC, were invited to participate in the shooting of a music video for HMC member, Bailey. During the shoot, a dispute broke out between the two sets and quickly turned physical. According to one testimony, a rival named Caliber tried to go after Nathaniel two times before the video shoot, but Rico intervened to stop it. Caliber then started a fight with Rico, during which a female CHC member, Spaz, stabbed somebody named Star, and then stabbed Rico in the back two times. Rico then told Fly and J-Rock to go get the grip. Rico then instructed two roll in 30s, in sum and substance, to get their gun and shoot. J-Rock would be one of those point men to retrieve the firearm. While they went to retrieve the gun that had been stashed in a vehicle parked nearby, the melee continued and migrated down the street. Suazo fled into a bodega on East Tremont Avenue, and video surveillance introduced at trial showed that Rico followed Suazo into the bodega and personally punched Suazo in the face. When Rico and Suazo exited the bodega to rejoin the fight that had continued outside on East Tremont Avenue, the two subordinates returned with a the gun. They did exactly what Rico ordered them to do, and Suazo, the same person Rico had just been punching moments earlier, was shot and killed. During the indiscriminate shooting, the female CHC member, Spaz was also shot, she survived her injuries. Immediately thereafter, while fleeing, J-Rock was captured on security camera footage leaving the gun underneath a nearby parked vehicle. The gun was later recovered by law enforcement. J-Rock, who was not even 30 by the time he was charged in connection to these events, had managed to rack up a nine convictions, including two prior felony convictions for firearms possession. By the age of 16, J-Rock had already been adjudicated a juvenile delinquent for grand larceny in the fourth degree and adjudicated a youthful offender for robbery in the second degree. After becoming an adult, J-Rock escalated his criminal conduct. In 2014 defendant was convicted of criminal sale of a controlled substance in the third degree for selling drugs to an undercover police officer and of attempted criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree for possessing a 45 caliber handgun, which J-Rock had discharged and accidentally shot himself in the hand. Every subsequent year after that, J-Rock was arrested and subsequently convicted for additional crimes conspiracy in the third degree in 2014, criminal possession of a controlled substance in the seventh degree in 2015, disorderly conduct in 2016. While Nestor Suazo's death is, by far, the most tragic consequent of one of j -Rock's shootings, it is also important to note that his incident was not the last shooting that j -Rock performed on behalf of the gang. On April 14, 2016, J-Rock, along with two other Roland 30s members, were in the vicinity of East Tremont Avenue and Belmont Avenue in the Bronx when they spotted some members of the rival Trinitario street gang. J-Rock ran down the street towards the Trinitarios and fired multiple shots at them. One of the bullets missed the intended targets and struck an innocent bystander in the right side of the chest. The victim required medical treatment but survived his injury. Let's do a little more specifics on Perp. Perp, her purpose, was the leader of the Stratford Avenue Roland 30s, a violent subset of the Roland 30s that fell under Rico control. 
As the head of Stratford Avenue, Perp stored guns for the gang, collected money, issued directives to younger or less powerful members, and participated in numerous brutally violent acts of gang violence. On March 26, 2015, a man named Victor Chafla, an innocent father of seven, was shot by one of Perp Stratford Avenue Roland 30s, a man named Dirt. Dirt, accompanied by a Demina, had opened fire on a busy street during an attempt to murder rival gang member Luco. Perp called Dirt and told Dirt that the ops was out there on Morrison. Given Perp's status as a big homie, a Demina understood that to be an order, that they were to grab a firearm and go try to shoot the op, if they did not, Demina testified that he would have been C-ripped or beaten for not following one of Perp's orders. Dirt and the Demina obtained a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun and then walked toward the 5050 Deli, located on Morrison Avenue. There they spotted the target. As Luco exited the 5050 Deli, Dirt pointed the 40 cal down a crowded street and fired multiple times. His bullets missed Roberts entirely. Instead, one of Dirt's bullets hit an innocent bystander, Victor Chafla, in the head. A 43-year-old father of seven, Chafla had been standing in front of the store where he had worked for 10 years, next door to the deli, stocking fruits and vegetables on the display. One witness described how she had been speaking with Mr. Chafla as he stocked lemons and tomatoes while she played with her son when she saw Mr. Chafla get shot. Video from storefronts nearby showed the aftermath of the shooting and other innocent bystanders fleeing the scene in terror. Chafla had been hit in the head, but his injuries were not immediately fatal. As the EMS technicians carried him to the hospital, he was still conscious and he yelled I want to go home, can I go home? He never did. He died at the hospital a few days later. Dirt's criminal history also underscores the strength of his gang commitments. Although Dirt has just one prior conviction for unlawfully possessing marijuana, two arrests relating to armed robberies, strong arm robberies, firearms, resisting the police, his arrest history tells a very different story. On April 20, 2016 he was arrested for graffiti. In fact, Dirt was tagging a store owner's wall with a reference to a deceased Roland 30s member named Primo and claiming the area as a Crips run block. He did this by crossing out of the letter B in disrespect for the Blood Street Gang. On another occasion, Perp drove to pick up Bailey. When Bailey entered the vehicle, Perp handed him a gun and told Bailey that he, Bailey, was going to commit a shooting. Perp began driving and as they arrived behind another vehicle, Perp instructed Bailey that Perp would drive their car alongside the other vehicle, at which point Bailey should open fire. At the last second, as Bailey was about to start shooting, Perp told him to stand down because the individual in the other vehicle was not the intended target. Perp revealed to Bailey that he thought he had received information on the whereabouts of Jaden Robinson, the leader of an opposing crew, and that was the reason for the planned shooting. Like Rico, Perp's offense conduct was not limited to ordering others to commit violence for the role in 30s. As the jury found, Perp was also the primary perpetrator of the May 14, 2015 drive-by shooting against Spider, which was sparked by Rico. Perp, accompanied by four other members of the Roland 30s, drove to Davidson Avenue, where the rival Crips were based. During the drive-by shooting, Perp fired multiple shots from a 40 caliber gun at Spider. In fact, Perp hit two people neither of whom were his intended target and neither of whom had anything to do with the gang dispute. The first victim was a young woman who heard the gunshots, saw someone collapse, and then tried to run away, only to be shot one time in the leg as she fled. The second victim was a 67-year-old gentleman who perp shot three times, hitting him in his shoulder, thigh, knee, and wrist. When the police arrived, victim two was only semi-conscious and could not even speak to the detectives. The woman would survive and the male would fall into a coma. But even that terrible outcome did not dissuade perp from continuing to engage in violence. Thus, as the jury also found on June 10, 2015, various members of the Roland 30s, including Perp, assaulted Elsie, a member of another opposing crew. At trial, video and photographic evidence was introduced which showed the beating occurred as Elsie casually strolled down a public street in broad daylight. After Elsie had been knocked to the ground and lay prone, Perp gleefully ran up and stomped on Elsie's neck and face. This was quickly followed by another member of the role in 30s drawing a razor across Elsie's face, permanently disfiguring him. During the beating, Perp gleefully kicked Mr. Elsie in the head as he lay bleeding on the ground. Miggs was another member of the Rolling 30s and also accompanied Perp in the drive-by shooting on Davidson Avenue. 
In the immediate aftermath of the shooting, as Miggs and the others fled in their car, Miggs was seen leaning out the window, flashing gang signs associated with the Roland 30s. He was sentenced to 96 months in prison, but is also awaiting trial for a 2015 murder. On Christmas Eve of that year, 2015, Justin Morris was hit in the back several times by bullets on Jerome Avenue near East 183rd Street in University Heights. It happened around 10.55 p.m. He died at the scene beneath the elevated train tracks. A 19-year-old man was also shot, but was taken to St. Barnabas Hospital, where he survived. Prior to the shooting, Justin was arguing with a rival crew after dropping off his girlfriend, according to cops. By 2016, Miggs would eventually be picked out of the lineup and arrested for Morris's death. He'd be charged with murder, manslaughter, criminal possession of a weapon, along with attempted murder and assault. From at least 2009 to 2017, Gutta was a member of the Roland 30 Street Gang. Gutta held a leadership role within the gang, achieving the role of G, which placed him in the role of lieutenant directly below the rank of big homies or OGs, like Perp, and two levels below the O, Rico. In his capacity as a G, Gutta directed the actions of subordinate gang members. But his status did not prevent Gutta from engaging in a series of violent incidents himself, directed at members of opposing street gangs or crews. These incidents were motivated in part to protect Roland 30's territory, to settle internal power disputes, to attack opposing crew members, and to increase Roland 30's members' power, reputation and influence. Evidence at trial proved Gutta's participation in numerous acts of violence, including shootings in 2009, 2014, and 2017. On April 25, 2009, Gutta participated in an attempted murder on behalf of the Roland 30s. That evening, Gutta retrieved a firearm from his apartment and began searching the neighborhood for rival blood gang members. Gutta traveled to an area controlled by the Bronx River House's subset of the Bloods gang, with whom the Roland 30s had an ongoing feud. Gutta spotted a group of individuals on the street and began firing at them. Gutta fired approximately six times before fleeing the scene and being caught by law enforcement officers immediately thereafter. Nobody is believed to have been injured during the shooting. As a result of committing this attempted murder, Gutta pled guilty to criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, a felony, in Bronx County Supreme Court on May 5, 2009. In approximately 2014, Bailey was shot in the face by Jaden Robinson, the aforementioned leader of the Bronx River House's subset of the Bloods gang, another opposing crew. Bailey told Gutta what had happened, and Gutta reassured Bailey, don't worry about it, bro, we got you, get well. Gutta subsequently informed Bailey that he had shot at Robinson in retaliation. Gutta's repeated efforts to shoot at Robinson were corroborated by evidence from Demina, who also testified that Gutta, accompanied by another member from the Stratford lineup, had gone to shoot at Robinson in early 2014. On September 6, 2017, Gutta participated in another attempted murder on behalf of the Roland 30s. In connection with the Roland 30s' ongoing dispute with the Bronx River House's bloods, Gutta traveled to the Bronx River House's in search of Jaden Robinson. Gutta opened fire and then fled the scene. During the shooting, Gutta did not hit Robinson, but instead mistakenly shot Colin Bromwell. Bromwell, a member of the Silent Murder Crips, a Crip set affiliated with the Roland 30s, was only at the Bronx River Houses because he was bringing shoes to his daughter. As Bromwell exited the apartment building, he was spotted by Gutta, who thought that Bromwell was Robinson. Gutta, along with at least two other Roland 30s, followed Bromwell, Gutta then shot him multiple times. Bromwell survived his injuries, after people in the apartment building nearby called 9-11 to get help. In connection with the September 6, 2017, attempted murder, Gutta illegally possessed Federal 45 auto cartridges. Gutta possessed this ammunition after having been previously convicted of a felony in 2009. More recently though, in March of 2021, Jaden Robinson, aka Don, was shot multiple times outside Miss Antigito's Juice Bar on Morrison Avenue near East 172nd Street. It happened about 3.30 in the afternoon. ShotSpotter, the NYPD's high-tech sensors for detecting gunfire, captured the sounds of five shots. Robinson, 30, was rushed to Jacoby Medical Center, where he died. His criminal record included arrests for rape, robbery, assault, including punching a dude out of taking his chain. He was due in court in May for that last offense. Also in May, police arrested Chris, 30, charging him in the March 9 slaying of Dong. 
Members of the NYPD's Regional Fugitive Task Force caught up with Chris near his White Plains Road home. He is facing murder charges. Rico, unlike his co-defendants, has no criminal history of note despite spending decades working his way up the leadership ladder of the Roland 30s. This is not coincidental. The gang concentrated its violent enforcement actions among its younger, more impressionable members, with the goal of insulating leaders like Rico and Perp from criminal investigation. Rico also evaded law enforcement scrutiny by threatening others, including cooperating witness Rodriguez, from reporting. Despite having legitimate employment available to him as a janitor, Rico chose an unlawful path even using the school where he worked to conduct gang business. Like Rico, Perp had an outsized role in the Roland 30s through his leadership of the Stratford Avenue line. Also like Rico, Perp had legitimate employment, but nevertheless chose to engage in dangerous and unlawful activities. These activities included calling for and running gang-wide meetings, collecting money for purchasing guns, supervising drug sales, and using his apartment as a base of operations. When Perp took on larger duties of controlling larger portions of the gang, Gutta became the highest-ranking member of the Stratford lineup. Gutta's apartment was one of the gathering spots for gang members, where they would meet and have access to firearms, because Gutta kept guns at his apartment for the gang's use. Gutta also distributed narcotics on Stratford as part of the gang. As Bailey testified, Gutta sold heroin, although it was not a significant activity for Gutta. Like the other trial defendants, Gutta was involved in Roland 30s for many years. His criminal history is similarly reflective of his long-time participation in criminal activity. It includes convictions for criminal possession of a weapon at age 17, followed by a parole violation and revocation, and attempted assault. On September 22, 2022, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York announced that Rico was sentenced to 39 and a half years in prison and Perp was sentenced to 39 and a half years in prison for their roles as leaders of the violent Roland 30s Crip Street Gang. Jerock, who served under Torres in the Roland 30s Crips, received a sentence of 24 and a half years in prison for shooting and killing Nestor Suazo, 25, on September 19, 2015. J. Rock's sentence was imposed to run concurrently with a previously imposed watching, 